This is how the hot dog fairy saved the entire Lehigh Valley. And on Tuesdays in July, hot dogs at Potts were only one dollar. I gotta find out how the hot dog fairy does this. Welcome to Potts. What can I get you? Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, and sometimes Emmaus. Welcome to the Lehigh Valley with Love Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Lehigh Valley with Love Podcast. I am your co-host, George Wacker, with our other co-host, Tyler Rothrock. Hello, hello. How'd your weekend go? It was good. It was good. I had, a, you know, some family over. Some stories were told. Give me one. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, you want one just story? Go ahead. Oh. Well, Where it was funny. Fun? This weekend was, uh, my, I had my grandmother over. Giant food stores have robots. Yeah, they're that like... Clean uh, I guess they're, they're, the job is they clean spills. That's their whole... I don't think they even clean them. I think, I think they, well, they, they just they just say, hey, there's a spill. And then somebody <laughs> else has to do it. That's what they that's do. That's the job of the robot. Hey, don't go too... You don't want the robots doing too much Couldn't too soon. could just anybody else do that? Like if they're yeah, walking yeah. by? Um, yeah. That, like my a... aunt saw one night uh, or at, at the Giant, uh, a, a young girl was yelling at the robot and like messing with it, trying to... Stop its progress at, at finding the spill. As, as kids do. And the and the dad was was mad at the, their kid yelling at the child for like harassing, <laughs> the, harassing robot. the robot. That's and where I we are. and uh, I said, uh, Hey Nana, <laughs> did you ever think that in your lifetime you would hear that somebody was getting yelled at for harassing a robot? And she was just mortified. She was blown away. By like it I all. hate robots. She, keep in mind, she just figured out that. Sometimes people communicate without their voices, you so mean through like, text. And <laughs> through where's your grandma live? She in, in Nazareth. Nazareth. Yeah, that that we makes, just got internet. It's makes dial-up. a lot of, a lot of sense. We're keeping at least in the food category. We do have a fun, uh, interesting guest: the owner and chef at Bolit Restaurant in Bethlehem, Lee Chismar. So yeah, welcome. Thank yeah, you for being. Thanks, thanks for having for me. For coming on. Yeah. You're gonna. <clears throat> Probably leave really disappointed with our knowledge, <laughs> our culinary <laughs> knowledge. We, right. Well, you know, we'll, I nail we'll grilled cheeses. I'll grilled say cheeses. that. What? Well, we have. What are you? The what is like, cheese is tough though. It is. You know it is. What I mean, because everyone burns it. Uh, everyone you burns know, it. There, I've a, actually gotten so. I now I just like burnt grilled cheese. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> I've done it so often. <laughs> That's my taste now. That's my palate. Is just burnt grilled, grilled cheese. Right. Well, what? Like, what are you? What is your famous dish at Bolit? Do you have like one or two? So that, I, you know we're. I think we change the menu a lot. Obviously, local, we're, we're using as much as we can from local farms. Um, so, you know, we have an oyster dish that's been on the menu. It's just chilled oysters with uh, shiitake mushroom mignonette, crispy shiitake. That's been on since the beginning. Steak tartare is probably one of the the big go. ones. It goes away every now and then. And then we have a butterscotch pudding for dessert. So those are the things that I feel like we're best known for. You have that. <laughs> you know? Ty- Tyler has, like, tricks. What do you mean? Like that would be tricks, your special yeah, that's, my, uh, that's well, that's dessert. <laughs> <laughs> tricks, dry tricks, because that because the milk's gone bad. <laughs> uh, one, one, this is a true story. One time, I had to stay with my brother. He was in like just out of college. Uh, I was like twenty five. It was in Bethlehem, so he came down for like a couple weeks in the summer, and it was me and my buddy who stayed over. And we'd get up for breakfast, and we'd get like the frosted flakes out, and he's got no milk. And we're like, "Well, where's the milk?" He's like, "You just we just use water in this house." What? Yeah, you know? oh, man. I hear that a lot. Yeah, yeah I, actually, I guess uh, it makes. I, I guess that it's better than nothing. Water. I, I've used. I, I used to be lactose intolerant for like a week. My mom tried to give me cereal with ar- in orange juice, with orange juice, <laughs> and I threw it. I'm like, I will. I I, I will not stand for this. You're like, mom. mom we, there's so many things we can do, yeah, mom. Yeah, this is the line. line yeah. yeah, you got to draw the line. Anything <laughs> else? So do, you're you're from Allentown originally. Can yes. you kind of give us your? How, how did you? Did you realize when you still first lived in Allentown or still lived so, in the area that you love food? And- so we, uh, my dad used to work for the Wood Company, which was a corporate food service company, yeah. eventually turned into Sodexo, but he was one of the big, Bob Wood was a big founder of, of food and culinary mm-hmm. in the Lehigh Valley. So from there, you know, most of my summer jobs I spent in kitchens um, and I went to college and my dad kind of pressured the Culinary Institute of America. And so because he was pressuring me to, of course, I didn't do it. Um, so <laughs> like, in sorry, college, Daddy, yeah, all of your yeah, yeah. Dreams. It's, like, it's one of those things. You have to be careful how hard you push your kids. Right. Um, so through college, I still continue to work in kitchens. And, you know, I realized, hey, food is what I really love. And I don't know why I'm fighting it. So from there, I went to the Culinary Institute of America. Um, 
after there, I went out to uh, San Francisco, just north of San Francisco, and worked at a place called Lark Creek Inn for Bradley Ogden and my mentor, Jeremy Sewell. Out there, that was really, you know, I learned about uh, the farm-to-table movement. We would go to the farmer's market, some of the best in the country. We'd go to the farmer's markets every day, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning and, and changing the menu all the time, seasonal. Uh, from there, I followed Jeremy to Boston, uh, where we opened a restaurant called Great Bay, uh, which was basically about seafood. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we kind of still, with that you know, hunt for good quality products, we just flipped that to seafood. And uh, Jeremy was actually from Maine, and his family's lobster fisherman. So we would go up to Maine to buy lobsters right off the boat, and we would search out the best seafood. So that's kind of where you know, my love for oysters and stuff was finalized, yeah. and really great seafood. Um, and then we opened 12 years ago. Uh, and the rest is kind of history. With Bo never look back. Never look back. I'm still waiting. You know, I'm always like waiting for someone to come and take the keys away from me. You know, because <laughs> yeah. it's just like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cooking. Is it, is sure. It, does it's, it feel like that? Does it feel like almost it, like a dream? It feels like a dream. You yeah. Know, and, it, and it's uh, and something in my life, I figured it would take me a little bit longer. Um, and, you know, ultimately in the end, my retirement is what I dream of is cooking for 20 or 30 people a night, you know, at a small, Mm -hmm. you know, farm and table kind of restaurant. We do a lot more than that. uh, And (laughs) it definitely doesn't feel like retirement. Yeah. um, But it is, you know, my wife works with me. My kids are there. My family's here. I'm back home. So you, yeah, but Boli has gotten like national attention. Uh, What do you attribute the accolades to like, is it your your passion? Do you guys is it your what do you, you what do you do differently that? So you know I think and and the interesting thing about the restaurant industry and and hospitality is it's it's really hard mm-hmm. um, and I think to do it well you have to work really hard uh, and I think it gets you know with the Food Network and how forefront the culinary world really is. You know I think people lose sight of hey this is really hard work. Yeah. Um, and so I think. The passion and love for food, and also you know growing up with my family, um, you know having those experiences where you have oysters for the first time, or um, you know the first time you had a tomato, you know from your backyard or mm-hmm. a farm where you can really taste the difference between mass-produced tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's those kind of things that I fell in love with, and that's what I want to share with everybody else that gets to come in. And I think that's having passion. Uh, for food itself, but also those experiences. That's what we, you know, aim and strive to share with yeah. the people of the Lehigh Valley uh, to kind of get that point across that this is what it can be. Um, and, you know, we, we work hard. Sometimes we have bad days, but, you know, it's, it's you're right back at it, mm-hmm. and you just got to keep on, keep on working. Well, what, um, what makes the Lehigh Valley special for you as compared to maybe some of those areas that you... So I have to say it's kind of funny that, you know, growing up here, I can remember back in the 90s working in kitchens and, you know, we had in every walk in and every restaurant, you had plum tomatoes, zucchini, broccoli uh, and, and maybe one other vegetable. And that was kind of standard. So I go out into the world and when I come back, it just so happens that the Lehigh Valley is filled with this great farmland, incredible small farms that are actually providing Philly and New York City with the best restaurants in the country with some of the best produce and best products. Uh, and it's right here, right down the street, wow. you know, in, in Cruz Quakertown, uh, Nutripoli, it's all around us, Nazareth, it's everywhere. And so that is just kind of, for me, it was like, this was home. I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, but here yeah, our yeah. home is filled <clears throat> with the most incredible, I mean, I would put the greens that we get, our tomatoes that we get, it's better than anything I've had in San Francisco. And it's a big claim. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge it's claim. A very big claim. Um, but if you get out there to the farmer's markets, you can find stuff that is better than anywhere in the country. Uh, and that's, it's remarkable, you know, and, that and it's does it, uh, Does the culinary world kind of work in the same way as, I mean, I don't want to make a bad right, analogy, right. but does it sometimes, you know, it starts in the bigger cities and then it takes time to get to the rural areas? And yeah, do you I see mean, that happening? You know, I think food in the United States is, is taking, you know, a really interesting evolution. Uh, and, you know, back in the 90s, I don't think the rest of the world I don't think people talked about it yeah. as much. Mm-hmm. We had some great restaurants in New York City, um, but food wasn't what it is today in this country. So it is amazing to see the evolution that took place in the cities 
and is now spilling out. Um, yeah. And, you know, the working in kitchens in New York City and long hours, less pay, the cost of living, yeah. um, you know, it makes sense to be, hey, I want to come out where I can go hiking. Right. Um, the story is that you're, you're there every day. It's hot. It's grueling. It's repetitive. Um, but, you know, all the awards that we've won tonight don't matter. You know, we have 50 people that are right. coming for dinner. Well, do you, and I tonight mean, I, we have to make sure that yeah. we live up to the expectations or continue to what we do. You just, That's a great you point. You know, you just, it's like, okay, we got nominated for a James Beard Award, but it doesn't change anything. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to go in and work just as hard, See, if I, not harder. I think that would know. kind of make it harder because now that you're like, Okay, we, we've won this award. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Right. But now people coming in are like, they won this award. Yeah. So this better be and also, the best it, thing I've ever had. Yeah, they, they, and they're, they're they're excited. They're at this place. Well, you get, mad, you you get mad when your Wawa Hoagie's incorrect. Like, can <laughs> yeah. you imagine if you're spending you yeah. know, some good right. money? No, yeah. it's, not, it's not cheap. And, uh, you know, it is definitely, you know, especially with Yelp and everything else. Yeah. I mean, the pressure's there. And, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I try not to... Like I don't go on Yelp. I don't go on mm-hmm. Open Good. Table. No I don't should. even really read, you know, too many of the reviews that we get. Uh, um, you know, I just try to focus on what I do every day and yeah. not get well, too you dri- far you away from that. You drive yourself nuts because there's going to be people who could go in and have the best meal ever, but their intention to come in was to right, to right, right. So you, and, you can do. and it's still, you know, it affects you sure. when you put that kind of love. And it's not just me. We have an incredible staff. Everybody works hard, even the you know your farmers, mm-hmm. all that stuff. It all goes to get that food to the to the plate, and you know I can I remember in twelve years I could probably tell you you know the six or seven people that were upset that were right. significantly upset. Like I'll never forget that, yeah. and it causes you to want to work harder. Right. But sometimes people are tough to please, no matter what you do. Cooking is definitely mainstream for sure. You know whether whether it's people telling us not to eat certain things or eat certain things. Um, do you feel like it's, it's an exciting time in the history of cu- culinary arts? I, I think especially in our country, um, but really in the world, how, how much attention it gets and how passionate people are getting about it. And, you know, even for children to be able to, I mean, my kids watch cooking shows nonstop um, and their food knowledge, you know, compared to what mine was when I was eight and five sure. is remarkable. Um, so all that, you know, I feel like it's just, it's the start maybe of it, but I can't wait to see where, where we are in 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and even, you know, you can tie in agriculture and farming, especially small farms to the environmental causes, you know, if people health, all that, you know, if people yeah. are eating better. Our kids are eating better in schools. All of that stuff swings. The environment gets better. It's just, it's an exciting time. Who knows where it's going right. to go? Have, um, have you seen that since you've started cooking that, in general, people are eating better. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. So, you know, when I was in Boston, um, you know, Boston's still very, very similar to the Lehigh Valley. It's, you know, blue collar, meat and potatoes mm-hmm. kind of. Um, and so we were at a seafood restaurant and I would get frog legs in sometimes or, you know, snails or. And to tell you the truth, in Boston, we would never sell them. Mm-hmm. And then to move to the Lehigh Valley. And, you know, the first time I put frog legs on the menu, I figured, well, I'll be eating these at the end of the night because no one's going to get them. Man, we sold out in like five minutes. It's amazing how excited people are around here, you know, to experience new things. Frog legs on the menu. We were talking earlier because I I just, I mean, obviously, if people have been listening to me for a while, they know that I'm not a, I have no culinary I'm not, I'm not that. <laughs> Are you surprised? I, can, I, can cook I know a we just met, but I don't know if you're surprised. <laughs> I can cook a burger and a steak, but if like, that's you're it. asking me to, that's my and then maybe like a chicken right. breast. Yeah, like going on and making any sort of. I'm a very big microwave person, <laughs> but I this I just started to. You got to up your game to like um, toaster oven. Toaster oven? <laughs> no, but I just started steaks, <laughs> and I'm doing this. You know, I know that's okay. That's I got to stay or whatever. So I, and like I've gotten very interested in. People making stuff via Instagram. Right. Do you think that aspect has propelled the interest uh, of of the like cooking and people for getting sure. interested? Yeah, for sure. And even as a chef, you know, growing up, um, when you know I worked for some of the great chefs across the country, you know, you went in, you did your job, um, you learned from them, and that was it. 
we never deviated. Mm -hmm. You know, if you change something, the plate got thrown across the room. <laughs> you know, it was pretty intense. Um, but it's amazing now to see, um, you know, in our kitchen, we're very much a team. I'm the chef there, but, you know, the people that work at our restaurant, they're all a part of it. Mm -hmm. We create dishes together. And it's amazing to see with the younger people in the kitchen now that are watching those Instagram videos all the time, you know, they're pushing me to right. let's talk about fermentation. Let's talk about, hey, I saw this. What do you feel like about this? And it's kind of cool because their knowledge is still, you know, they're still learning. They're mm -hmm. at the beginning stages, but they're getting these good ideas. And then they're to marry excited. that. Yeah, they're excited about it. And then to be able to pull from is your experience of 20 or 30 years of cooking food and seeing things, you know, on the front lines to be able to bring those two together are it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so you're not like a Gordon Rant, like you're not hit, calling anyone an idiot sandwich <laughs> no. back there. And, and you know, I've gone through my <laughs> I've gone through my progression of, you know, kitchen life and I'm definitely to the point where I just want to have fun. Uh -huh. I want to have a good time. I want to want I want to come to work. I want everyone that works for us well, to want what, to come to work. What is that? Um, I mean, I don't want to sound too naive, but that culture of like the Gordon Ramsay right. method for lack of a better term. Right. Is that meant to be sort of like the military on purpose or what? Is, like yeah, I mean, I can tell a quick story. And this is when I was in Boston and um, I had just taken over as chef uh, at Great Bay and we're dinner service. And, you know, one of the servers comes back and says, hey, the, the clam chowder is spicy. Why is it spicy? So I took a taste and uh, the guy making the soup had put so much black pepper in it that it actually was spicy. You know, I mean, it actually burned your mouth. So, you know, I kind of freaked out and and um, I'm yelling and screaming. And, you know, I felt something in my heart kind of go. And and there were two things. One, you know, all these times, you know, I think I had just lost a best friend. I didn't get to go to the funeral. I missed two best friends weddings. You know, there's all this stuff that you give up to put this food out and to sacrifice your social life and everything. So I started thinking that I've sacrificed all this stuff to get to this moment and my clam chowder is too spicy because of the black pepper. So I'm freaking out. But then I also felt like, you know, this isn't, I'm not going to live too long. You know, mm -hmm. I can feel my heart beating. And so that whole thing kind of changed for me. And, and I just said, you know, this isn't the right way. You know, we, yeah. there's got to be a better way. Now with that, though, when you run a mill, you know, I used to go to work uh, when I was 18 or 19 years old, and I was scared. I was scared I had to be set up at five o'clock. I was scared if I put too much pepper. And so, you know, there is a, a change in philosophy where part of that is just to make sure that everything gets done right the same way every time. And you know there's consequences. You know there's yeah. consequences. And that's that's a way, and you know, that made the better restaurants better because mm -hmm. everything was perfect. But there's know? an element of, and if you're going to work scared, you, you, your creativity and your imagination might suffer for sure right? so for sure and you might lose out on the back end right you, know. you get you get um you start being resentful right mm -hmm. well and also you know there's a huge issue across the country we have all these great restaurants opening up and the staff is not really there to uh supply the needs of the restaurants so you know that's another thing if you're going to work and you made it a year and you've gone to work scared every day why do you want to go where are you going to spend right. another year doing that yeah yeah, yeah. You know i would mean? think so too like i think Maybe some people think, oh, if you're working in a restaurant, you know, you, your position is you know, maybe entry level or something like that. But that's not the case for a lot of positions right. are, you know, this is yeah, what I you're mean, doing as a career. Yeah. And I, and I think that's also, um, you know, you can make a really nice life out of the restaurant industry. Sure. Um, I have multiple friends right. in, in this and, area. Uh, and so I think and the other thing is the, you know, teaching aspect. When, if you don't have the talent that's coming in, then you're going to have to create it yourself. And so it's getting new people in that maybe don't have the experience and, you know, inspiring them, you know, showing them your love for what you do. And hopefully mm -hmm. that love transfers to what they can do. Like when people say bully, you know, and I'm sure you know this and, and um, it's great that when they say bully, they know like that's one of the top restaurants in the Lehigh Valley. Um, do you have any that you're really fond of other restaurants or maybe any that would be surprising? So, I mean, I think, you know, always um, we have some really nice ethnic restaurants. Um, you know, Sean Doyle over at Savory Grill has always done a fantastic job. Um, you know, we uh, we enjoy Kome a lot. They do some really nice sushi out there. Um, 
we were you know big fans of Red Hot, which was a, yeah, a Szechuan Chai. I know they closed down. So U and T down on Third Street's really dynamite. Uh, Loans, uh, a Vietnamese place. Uh, they do pho in the uh, Allentown Farmers Market. Uh, we really love we love her. She does some fantastic stuff. You know dishes that you won't get anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when she runs her specials and stuff. Um, so I, and, and you know it's just kind of funny how. Uh, it's an exciting time for the Lehigh yeah, Valley. There's, there's so many new restaurants popping up. Uh, I wish they all weren't closed on <laughs> Mondays. <laughs> you know? yeah, so yeah. It kind of limits yeah, what your one day off. You know, didn't you, to, go, you, know. you went to Bolit once. Yeah, 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 I went to Bolit. It was awesome. That's why, uh, That was another question. So as somebody that's gone to culinary school and also learned in the kitchen, if there's somebody out there watching that maybe wants to be a chef or has aspirations to work in a kitchen, uh, are both necessary where did you learn your most so important information you know culinary school is great Mm -hmm. um and you know i went to the cia um and you know for me that was like the hogwarts of the culinary world you know they have massive libraries and clubs and all these groups and everybody that's there is about food Mm -hmm. um but it's quick you know it's quick you're there for a year and a half two years for your associate's degree um so you they shoot this wide net of knowledge and what you actually catch out of it uh, is tough. Mm-hmm. You know, if, and if you can't afford to go to culinary school, it's not, you don't have to do it. You know, if you find a good restaurant that's doing things the right way, you know, there's nothing better or, or, or a way to learn right. than getting in there and doing it every day. Uh-huh. It's going to be hard. Yeah. You know, you're going to start at the bottom and you're going to have to work your way up. Um, and you just have to remember, you know, Every day, I, sometimes I have to remind, I think of a mussel dish that I had or the first time I had oysters with my daughter or that first, you know, perfectly cooked burger. Uh, and you keep that love inside you that, that helps keep you going when you're like, man, I, you know, I feel I'm really tired today. <laughs> you know, I try to think of those yeah. thoughts to kind of keep you going. And I think that's, it's good advice because, you know, pretty much everyone that starts in the colonial world is going to get to a point where they think, hey, I can't do this anymore. Do you have some staff that has is, has aspirations to work their way up, too? Is that? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I, I think everybody at Bolit wants, you know, they're there also because they want uh, to get, you know, to the top. That's a cool um, thing because that you're the person that is serving you, you, you could be in your well, it's in this of, chair yeah. one day. Right. And that actually it's, you know, it's also very competitive in the culinary world and you know, when you first start working, right, you're eyeing everybody up. All right, <laughs> I can do it better than him. I'm going to do this. That guy makes a mean clean yeah. job. <laughs> and it's scary, too, when yeah. someone's working harder than you. You're like, oh, I got to up my game. Um, but I am definitely to the point where I can't wait uh, for someone to come up and, hey, chef, why don't you uh, go open another restaurant? Yeah. I want to take over Bolid. Do you have a guilty a guilty <laughs> pleasure uh, uh, restaurant where... Like if oh man, if nobody sees me, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat I'm gonna grab something here. So you know, I mean, I mean, we I don't get out very much. I, I do actually enjoy Arby's. Yeah. Um, and, they got the meat right. <laughs> it's good. We, we, so I do a, a chef cycle uh, ride. It's a 300 mile ride, 100 miles a day. Arby's is a big sponsor out there, <laughs> and so when when we come through. Uh, at lunch stop, there's an Arby's food truck, or at the end yeah. of the day, there's the curly fries or the sandwich. But and I, I don't even know. He, he probably won't. Their corporate chef is there, and he's like riding his bike, and he's sitting down, and and he's got a salad. And so there's a news crew there, and they come over, and they're like, hey, they want to interview the Arby's chef. And uh, he's like, all right. So he just real cool. He just turns. He goes, get this out of here. <laughs> get, 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 get me the pork belly. You know, they slide it in. He does his interview. He's like, all right, give me the salad back. And the salad comes back. That's, so that's was, awesome. Uh, yeah, that was one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> they got to see me with a plate of brisket. <laughs> yeah. Or else, like, I'm the Arby's yeah. guy. He was like, we do really nice salads, but they can't see me with a salad. <laughs> so. That's funny. Do you do? Are there any things to look forward to during the, the summer months? Do you do any type of events, or is it mostly just... So we, we do an Outstanding in the Field, which I think is in September. Um, and that's, we go uh, to Blooming Glen with Outstanding in the Field. It's an organization. Um, and we cook dinner on the farm out you know over wood fired grills um and that's we usually have one of the biggest in the country i think we did almost 250 people last year which Mm -hmm. is pretty crazy um we're getting ready to open uh this summer our our 
Clam Shack uh, should be open in Easton, uh, Silver Shell Counter and Kitchen. Oh, cool. Where's that going to um, be? Is it? So it's in the Easton Public Market. Nice. Um, right. It's across from Mr. Lee's Noodles. Um, okay, so, so right in the front there. Yep, right All in right. the front. Um, so that, that should be open this summer. So we'll have oysters on the half shell and nice. fried whole belly clams and, yeah. you know, some good uh, French fries and fried fish. And so we. there there's like a lot of like local farms that you use, how do you, what's your selection process? And if there's a farm out there that maybe wants to get some stuff in, right. how, well, what do they do? So, you know, chefs are definitely creatures of habit too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you find farms that you really like, and and we obviously you want to taste product, you want to get out, get out there and search for the best carrots or the best tomatoes or whatever. Um, and we have a good portfolio now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're a new farm looking to break in, you just got to, you got to knock on the doors, man. You got to be, you gotta be yeah. relentless. Uh, and until I say no, <laughs> then you keep coming. Yeah. You know, keep calling, keep doing whatever. But bring samples, let people try. Um, and I think that's you know, if your product's great, you're, yeah. you're going to get in the door. Um, we have one farmer. I don't even order from him. He just brings the stuff, <laughs> and then we'll make the menu from there. And <laughs> if, this is all I yeah, got. Yeah, 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 I got yeah, carrots today. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, all right, so here we go. Um, but, you know, we, if the carrots are really good, we appreciate the carrots. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to want to try to create right. a dish that, that's going to yeah. showcase them. He's like, you better um, make radish soup tonight because <laughs> it's all I got. We, we've, had some, <laughs> we've had some interesting soups over the years. Yeah. So. But that's, you know, to go out and see, okay, they got tomatillas or they got this, they got that. And we'll write the menu from there. There are occasionally where... Um, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of farmers around here growing English peas anymore. They, they grow really great, but they're tough to harvest, and it takes, you know, a lot of manpower. So occasionally we'll get, you know, three pounds of English peas. You get super excited about it. You put the dish on. I'm like, ah, no, man, that was it. I don't have any more. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to grow them ever again, so good luck. So from there, then, you got to switch gears uh-huh. and go to something else. But we don't ever get too set in, you know, uh, especially with like our chicken farmers and egg farmers, you know, if you guys run out of stuff, we'll switch to rabbit or pork mm-hmm. or whatever. It just kind of keeps it flowing. That's mm-hmm. part of you, like as the owner and the chef, head chef. That's your. It's got to be going on in the back of your mind. You're calculating oh, yeah, constantly. Yeah. Oh yeah, all day, all day. So you got to be making food, uh, making sure guests are having a good time, but also meanwhile, ma- making sure your staff is right. doing what they need to be doing. Right. And then also in the back of your head, like, well, this is how much of this we have left. Right. Yeah. And they wake up and do that every day. Oh, so man. Just, yeah. like, <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, and that is something that I've been delegating a little bit more with my staff. You know, they're fantastic on, you know, they actually keep track of a lot of the pars. Hey, we're going to run out of this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a team effort there, which makes it a lot easier. Would you say that the, the kitchen at Bolite is a controlled chaos going on? It's kind of interesting because Bolite's very t- tiny. Mm-hmm. Our kitchen's very small. Um, it's actually, you know, I mean, that building's 200 plus years old. Yeah. And, and almost all kitchens are chaotic. Um, I think. Uh, I wish we had a little bit better facility, and <laughs> we're, hopefully we're we're moving in the right direction yeah. to get the kitchen remodeled and stuff. But cool. uh, well, we we wish you all the best. Uh, yeah, we thank you fun. very much for coming on. I feel they learned a lot. I feel hungry. Do you want to go? <laughs> Tyler's gonna go cook something. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we'll see you. Thanks Bolita so much for summer. having thank me. You very much. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Thank you for watching the Lehigh Valley with Love podcast, filmed at the PPL Public Media and Education Center at PBS Thirty Nine.